Oh, look, that's me. That's me coming, like, coming with a big doorway, with ducking my head down because I'm so f tall. Why was this documented? You two ready to go or what? Go? Why didn't you tell her about this beforehand so that you didn't catch her off guard? The stars on Amethyst's pants are missing in this shot. In this shot, Steven just has regular shoes and not sandals. That's honestly really weird and surreal to see. Also, no, Steven Universe Wiki, Peridot does not have six fingers on her right hand in either this shot or the next one. I can give them the benefit of the doubt here, though, because counting the fingers on this hand specifically makes it feel more like an optical illusion than a hand drawing. That's more than likely just me, though. Is Mr. Smiley not even going to slightly question how these two grew so much in a short period of time? Not even a small check to make sure they aren't cheating the system in some way? Considering how the mirror works here, shouldn't Steven's pants in this reflection come above his knees rather than covering his legs entirely? The skin on Steven's legs should still at least be reflected in the mirror. I don't think even a hall of mirrors could actively cover that up. Also, I find it incredibly hard to believe that Peridot would be so hung up on not being able to shapeshift that she would ignore the mirror in front of her that I'm sure she'd be at least a little interested in. Surely something like this wouldn't have been on Homeworld due to a lack of usefulness, and so she'd want to at least ask about it. You're working the ring toss too? Yeah, you could say we're a little thunder staff. <laughs> I get it. I'm glad you see in the humor in it, Steven, because I haven't seen a bed in six days. Oh. Peridot's visor disappears here, only to reappear when she takes her hands away from her eyes. Is that Onion trying to light the roller coaster on fire? I'm not falling for that one again. Oh! <laughs> no! I'm still paying off the last lawsuit! I also do not steal Steven's clothes when he's not looking. What? Would you look at that? And I thought this thing was red. Then you should be questioning this win at least a little bit, shouldn't you? They're saying something for relatable humor, and then there's making a character look like an idiot. How exactly is this supposed to help Peridot shapeshift? I thought you just had to think about what you want to be and then just shake it out. So either that advice was a fucking lie, or they're severely overcomplicating this process for the sake of a montage. Also, they make Peridot's impression of a cat here look like she's falling asleep at the wheel after a long day of nitpicking. Actually, pretty relatable. Now this is just a game of catch. How is this gonna help? And no, it's not like it makes you practice shape-shifting your arms because Steven bounces the ball up to Peridot's head, which doesn't require shape-shifting to catch. Maybe we just have to activate it manually. You grab her feet, I grab the arms. Okay. It's not bad enough that this is even considered. It's that Steven fucking goes along with it without question. And honestly, this whole part makes me kind of squeamish, considering that they seem to straight up ignore Peridot's cries of pain. This isn't going to work. Peridot's voice should be muffled here. I knew. Resources are dwindling on Homeworld. They can't make gems like they used to. Just a fair warning, I'm about to go on a long, long nerdy tirade here. On the one hand, I can really appreciate that the crew universe puts little bits of lore into episodes like this. To keep the fans engaged, even in episodes where the overarching story progression is minimal. But on the other hand, this info comes right the fuck out of nowhere, and in an episode about a fun time at an amusement park, this just feels odd to include. And I think I know what they were going for. They were writing a more introspective Peridot, discovering more and more how flawed Homeworld really was. But I feel there was a much better place this explanation could have been put, and that's in Beta. Peridot could still think about all this up until that point, and then when the topic of the Beta Kindergarten comes up, she goes and explains how it works with Steven and Amethyst. Then as she does this, it slowly begins to dawn on her just how desperate Homeworld were when they were making Era 2 gems. And then she applies it to herself. Could that be why she had this inadequate feeling at Funland? Could she have been made actively worse than earlier gems of her kind? And if so, then how does that make her feel? It could actually be even more interesting because of how they show Jasper's entry hole being practically flawless. Did Homeworld focus most of their resources into other more superior gems? Leaving gems like Peridot to suffer in the long term? How would Peridot cope with knowing that the place she learned and served all her life thought she was just a replaceable asset that was made in 
inferior, possibly deliberately just to save on some petty resources. I'd say that opens up a lot of opportunity to write Peridot as someone who has to navigate this existential problem and learn that just because she was made on a budget doesn't make her any less important. But putting this lesson here really hurts that approach because this isn't established in an environment like the beta kindergarten, which seems tailor-made for stories like these. It's established in a slice of life episode set in a fucking amusement park. You know, the place typically built for people to forget about their problems. There's a bigger point to be made here about how overlooked I feel Peridot's character in this series is as a whole, but this is already long enough as it is. Just know that I think this moment would have been better served later in the season. Stop playing with that thing. Give me that. No! You don't need it. You don't know that. Yes, I do. Where is this coming from? Amethyst saying that Peridot doesn't need the tablet comes right the hell out of nowhere when the only thing Peridot really did wrong was not listen to her. The cause and effect don't really line up in that regard, so that makes this whole sequence feel really contrived. Maybe Amethyst thinks the tablet is partly to blame for Peridot feeling down about herself, but that feels even more out of nowhere. I don't think Peridot's insecurities are coming from being on that tablet. They seem a lot more deeply rooted than that. And I think even Amethyst would know that considering her experiences. I don't know. This whole scene comes off as just needing a way to introduce Peridot's metal powers. So they wrote first and asked questions later. That's 10 all right. Well, I guess you won fair and square. It's a wonder this guy doesn't get fired for how much money he probably loses this place. <laughs> 